Hi friends, welcome back for another Trinity Stamps video. This is Cassie. Today we're going to be making some trifold cards that use acetate and foiling. So let's talk about what we're using. We have our Frostbite Cafe. I didn't get a chance to use this at the beginning with the release, so I was so excited to ink this baby up. We also have our matching dies to go along with it. We're going to be using the Frosty Foiled Flakes. There are so many great snowflakes in here and it's gonna make a beautiful background. And then we're also going to be using the Embossed Edge Hills and Slopes. I've used this for a ton of cards already and I love it. So let's talk about our paper as well. This is going to be a five by seven. I have a piece of blue cardstock that measures uh, seven inches by 10 inches scored at five inches and that is upside down and then we have a piece of white cardstock that measures five by seven and then I have a piece of acetate that measures five and a half inches by seven inches we're gonna have that fold over and I'll show you when we get there so I did go ahead and stamp out all of my images onto some Express It cardstock using some blackout ink because I plan to do some alcohol marker coloring so I wasn't sure exactly what images I wanted where, so I decided to stamp all of them and all of their sentiments. And guess what? We use all of them as well. I'm going to make two cards. Uh, and then I have my Olo markers. So I'll start out just coloring these, and I've got this doubled up. I don't color this fast. And eventually, we are going to speed this up about eight times, but I am just putting down a little bit of blue-violet. If you've watched me color penguins at all, I typically don't color them gray or black. I like to color them violet, blue, blue-violet. Um, occasionally I'll do the gray, but today I decided to make some blue-violet, almost more of a blue uh, penguin. So we've got our colors up on the screen, and I always find it funny, but I've colored enough with alcohol markers. I find it funny that when you put down that darker color, it has a tendency to not look good until you start doing your blending. So I like to go lightest to darkest. That's no secret. If you've watched me before, of course, I screwed up there and started with the darker one. You can always fix that if you're not used to that. Um, again, as I've always said, do what is comfortable and right for you. A lot of people love to go dark to light. I don't. I feel like I use a lot more ink uh, when I do it that way. So as you can see, I'm just going to go along on these little penguins and we'll start with our Blue Violet 2.3. The tummy color that I used and their little face, I used a Blue Violet, I think it was a 2.0. And you'll notice, obviously, I left a lot of white space there as well. Don't be afraid of the white space. You can always color it in if you don't like it, but you can't take it away as easily if you color it up or cover it up. So I kept mostly white on their bellies, just put a little bit of that blue violet, that lightest blue violet color in there. And then I blend out all of those colors. Here we are speeding this up about eight times. I love to color. I know most of you who are watching this probably love to color as well. It's something kind of therapeutic. And so I don't mind just popping on some music or a book on tape or even a podcast or whatnot and having all these images stamped out and just coloring. It's, to me, again, super therapeutic and so much fun. Now, picking out the color combination, sometimes I struggle with that. So I will go to Pinterest and I will just kind of look up if I know there's a color I wanted to use, which in this case was that blue-violet. I'll look up color combinations that include blue-violet. And I was able to find a color combo that used this blue, a turquoise. Uh, I will use like an orangish color for their beaks and their feet. And then I also bring in red and I decide we're just going to go ahead and not make this too complicated. And all of their coats and their scarves are going to be red and white. That's it. We're just going to stick to a very simple color palette. Um, and it's funny, as I was coloring these, I was imagining these little penguins living in a community <laughs> where all they had were red and white clothes available to them. <laughs> I don't know why. I, do, am I the only crazy one that does stuff like that? Just thinks of little scenarios or little scenes for these guys and, you know, plays it out in my head. Yeah, I probably am. Either way, I do love this color combination and I think the little red, white, and then the little blue penguins. I guess I was channeling my inner America <laughs> as well. I don't know but love it. So, uh, and then we're just going to go in and fill in some of that with some gray, those neutrals that, you know, you always seem to need. So that'll, that'll work on like his goggles. And then we bring in some brown for the fishing pole and um, the coffee and things like that. But again, I just wanted to keep this fairly simple. 
sometimes you overthink it when you're going color combinations and you're, you know, I like to keep it simple. So like I said, there we have it. And then once everything is all colored, which doesn't take too crazy long, I am going to bring in the matching dies that go along with this. Obviously you don't need the matching dies. It does make it a little bit quicker if you have them. If you don't mind fussy cutting, this is a fun one to fussy cut. Uh, but the dies are super helpful as well. So I'm just going to tack all that down with a little bit of mint tape and then I'll run that through my die cutting machine and then we'll set those all off to the side so that we can use them on our cards later. And um, I will show you the process of one card that I make, but the other card's basically the same. Okay, so we are going to do some hot foiling. And it's funny, I wanted to make an A7 card and I thought, how's that going to work? Because our Glimmer hot foil plate is not 5 by 7 However, I did discover that wherever those plates are touching, it obviously is going to heat up the entire plate. So keep that in mind. Um, and it may not be as hot towards those edges, but I didn't seem to have too much of a problem. I went ahead and took my white uh, glimmer foil that I'm using, and I stuck that right on top of the blue cardstock that I plan to foil. And I'm now just kind of moving around my snowflakes where I want them on this background. So it is pretty side up. That foil is pretty side up. And then we put our snowflakes down on top of that this way. And then I'm going to bring in some mint tape and I'm going to tape everything down because again, I wanted to make more than one. So I wanted those snowflakes to stay in the same spot basically. So I didn't have to do this again. Also, it just makes it a little easier to transfer this now to the Glimmer Hot Foil system. And then I can save that mint tape for other projects like, you know, holding dies down or holding paper down or whatever it is you might need to do. So then I'm just going to wrap this around that paper to make sure that it stays in place. And this was basically a card base, an A7 card base, but I didn't, I couldn't have it open. It wouldn't go through my, um die cutting machine that way. So we do have it folded and that's okay. It actually does give a little bit more of like a shim. And here I am looking at it going, mm, those plates aren't going to fit all the way across that. You know what? We will figure it out when we get there. So I make my sandwich, run it through my die cutting machine, and then I peel this away and it actually does an amazing job. There's only one snowflake that didn't do a very good job as you can see, but I'm not really that concerned about it. Um, we're going to splatter away on this because I felt like this background just needed a little more and splatter is very forgiving. So it, it can cover a multitude of issues, as I always say. So I've got some, <laughs> I've got a cat actually that wants to join. So I'm going to give him a bunch of kisses and send him on his way. And then we have some picket fences, distress paint. I'm going to put that onto an acrylic block and then just splatter that all over that background, kind of focusing on that one snowflake that didn't cover very well. You're not going to notice it too much on the final card because it's more at the bottom of the card and that gets covered by our scene. And then I'm also going to bring in some of that Trinity gold palette, the Trinity stamps gold palette. The palette in the store looks different, but uh, it's base, it's the same. So it just looks a little different and the one in store is a little cheaper. So I've splattered the silver all over that background. We have tons and tons of beautiful splatter all over that. Adds some texture, makes it look like it's snowing a bit more. And I am so happy with how that turned out. We're gonna set that off to the side to dry. And then I have the acetate. I said it was five and a half inches, so I'm gonna score it at five inches. We are just going to build a little lip. That lip is going to wrap around that white piece of cardstock. So I'm just making sure that's foiled well using my uh, ergonomic Teflon folders that Trinity Stamps has and then I will just make sure that that score line is nice and, and enforced and it it is it looks great so here's what we'll bring in some rip and stick tape there are two different sizes in the store I'm going to use the quarter inch and all we need to do is just put a little bit of that on that lip that's hanging over I've got my white cardstock just backed up against that we'll peel off that release paper and then we can just fold that right over the top and then we will have basically another base. It's just one, the front is acetate. And then those will fold into each other. You'll see that later, uh, but those will fold into each other. So now we can build up our scene. I'm gonna bring in our embossed edge hills and slopes and I'm gonna die cut those. I'm actually gonna die cut two for every piece and you'll see why later. And I'm bringing in my crafty glue friend and we'll start building up our scene. So there's the base, our little 
our snow grounding and then we'll p pick in some of the pieces and just build up our scene and then once I'm happy with with how we've built that up we'll start gluing all of these pieces down love it and if you like which in the final pictures I did end up doing it if you want to add some grounding to it you can use an alcohol marker to kind of go around where their feet are and add some shadowing but we're just going to glue all these little cuties down and in place and like I said I did die cut just out of some white cardstock all these pieces that you see there except the little guy holding the fish fish sickle and the reason for that is I want that back to not look so sloppy so once we get to that point we'll we'll talk about it a little bit more um, I decided on the you're the coolest sentiment we're just going to put that down and then we'll flip this over and that's where I bring in all those white die cut pieces we are just going to cover up all that coloring it makes it look a little less sloppy a little more finished so we just cover that up it also adds to the acetate it makes sure that the acetate is a little bit I don't know reinforced I guess a little stronger maybe and any kind of acetate will work mostly um, I ended up using some it's a transparency film now I'm dating myself big time we use transparencies a lot when I was in school I don't think they use them now in school but anyway so I use a transparency film it works great they're inexpensive and I can you know cut them down however now the slope I ended up having to make a little bit bigger and you'll see it hangs off the edges I just wanted to make sure I had it lined up perfectly um, and then what I'll do is I'll use my guillotine trimmer and trim off all of that excess so now we have a base so what I'm going to do is we're going to glue these together to make a trifold and I am going to you may need to trim off just a hair on this piece because it's going to overlap just a hair tiny tiny bit and you may need to trim off a hair on this piece again just a tiny little sliver um, you may not depending on how your pieces fit together but I find it does help a little bit and then I'll use my crafty glue friend on the inside blue piece here and then all I'll do is take my white piece and stick that down on top and then we can try fold that up it's just a fun way to make a card really and then I'm gonna bring in these um, brand new embellishments these are the silver twinkle rhinestones there's a bunch of different ones out there using my crafty glue friend and my pickup stick that glue will dry clear but check out these cute adorable little trifold cards that use acetate and foiling ah I love them and I hope you like them too if you do please leave a comment down below go ahead and like that video and subscribe if you haven't already done so and be sure to check out all that Trinity Stamps has going on over on their blog, Facebook page, and Instagram for more crafty inspiration. Thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you soon.